What's up, world? Welcome to another episode of Nerdy Dating. I'm your host, Ali Zaka. What is Nerdy Dating? It's a relationship podcast from, from the viewpoint of a nerd. Please like, share, subscribe, share with your friends and family, share with somebody who might need some relationship advice, who don't want to come to somebody. So give them this. Hey, listen, you like listening to the podcast? Listen to this guy. You might get some good advice for you, get a different mindset. Hey, I might not. I don't know. Just share it though. Anyway, today's topic is about men and intimacy and also another question is what do men look for a relationship the first one here is from mensline.org.au it's men and intimacy they start saying men struggle with intimacy and they kind of explore that and why how come they said what is intimacy it's the experience of emotional closeness it occurs when two people are able to be emotionally open with one another and reveal their true feelings, thoughts, fears, and desire. This can only occur when both people are able to genuinely trust one another and feels able to take risks of being vulnerable. And it is a universal human need. Without it, we, are, we have the experience of loneliness. A perceived lack of intimacy is one of the most common reasons of relationship breakdowns. Difficulties for men. Men may abandon relationships and intimacy because they fear that they will lose their sense of independence. True emotional closeness is about balancing the sense of yourself while being while still being connected with another. That's 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 true. That's true. Like I've seen it with my friends, I've seen it with myself where you start giving up things that you like doing because you were like, well, I'm dating this person, so I'm going to give up doing this. I'm going to give up doing this. In reality, like you don't, you don't want to stop being who you are because one, the person talking to you didn't talk to you. They talking to you because you was doing those things already. You was already doing the stuff that you find yourself like, okay, they got their own thing going on, got their own thing going on. They're doing this over here, they're doing that over there. But then when you stop doing it, it's like, well, my girlfriend doesn't like me playing video games. So I'm going to go stop playing video games. My girlfriend doesn't like me doing this. I'm going to stop doing this. You find yourself getting more and more like agitated or more annoyed because you're like, I enjoy doing these things, but I got to give that up because the girl I'm talking to don't like those things. Don't do that. Don't don't lose your sense of independence. You can still enjoy your things still and still be independent, but also still be in a relationship with somebody and share your world with them. So men do fear that and because we've seen our friends like they don't come out anymore. They don't do this anymore. They don't play this anymore. All because, you no, know, the girl they're talking to is like having them over there doing this and doing that. Also, vice versa, it goes with women too. You see women start doing things with their friends because they're like completely invested in their relationship, but then when the relationship ends, they go back to their friends. Same with guys, the relationship ends, they go back, well, I'm, I'm free now. You can still have time with your friends and still be in a relationship. Make time. Anyway, moving forward. Men often confuse sex and intimacy. These are not the same thing. Sex without it can be very unrewarding, just as sex with it can be deeply passionate and fulfilling. It's also possible to experience intimacy without sex. Some men confuse intimacy with the honeymoon stage of a sexual relationship. It is a hormonal driven heightened sense of being in love, and they put that in, quote, in quotation marks, often with a corresponding high sexual desire. This stage lasts about six to thirty-six months of a relationship, and when if when slash if it ends, a relationship may seem to lose some of its in initial intensity. This does not mean that intimacy needs to be lost entirely. What it does signal is that the, a new beginning of the relationship in which both partners need to invest effort to maintain the emotional closeness they seem to come so effortly early on. So pretty much you're saying like over time Intimacy still needs to be there between the two. When the sex and all the all the like the physicalness kind of dies out, what keeps the relationship going is intimacy and the closeness you have with your partner, and keep that going. And that's something to keep in mind. But also, sex is part of it, though. It's not the full puzzle. It's not the full pie. Like, are you physically attracted to him? Are you emotionally attracted to him? Mentally attracted to him? Man, I'm talking to men out there. So you think about that, like, oh yeah, sex is great, but everything else is bad. That relationship's not gonna work out. So when that phase die out, when you're done, just like, okay, I'm, I'm having full of sex, and you look at like, when you move sex from the picture. What are you guys doing? There you go. So keep that in mind. 
that sex is not the only thing and sex does not relate correlate to intimacy. Men may also experience difficulty achieving intimacy because of lack of emotional vocabulary. Men often feel less able to express the way they are feeling than women and may feel uncomfortable with discussions about emotions. However, it's important to remember it's a skill and such can be learned. True. Nobody, nobody's born knowing how to be intimate with somebody or know what intimacy is. So you do have to learn it. You do have to grow and keep practicing it. And maybe it might not be the first relationship, maybe not be the second relationship, it could be the third, it could be the fourth, it could be the fifth, but yes, you do have to learn intimacy and also understand what your values are and understand what you're looking for. And understand that because one relationship you was in was purely sex driven and you're like, I don't have any emotional connection, then don't, don't be there and be open with your emotion. Be open with the way you want to speak about it and talk about it and not be afraid. You shouldn't be afraid to talk to your partner about how you feel about something. And you shouldn't be afraid to talk to your partner about how how this situation makes you feel and open up and like tell them things. You can't be afraid about that. You gotta be open. And that takes time. Tips for developing intimacy. Recognize it's a skill that takes practice. It's not always easy. It's okay to be apprehensive about it, but don't let that stop you from trying. Achieving emotional intimacy uh, and emotional closeness involves the emotional risk. If you open up to another, there's always a risk of being hurt. If the other person does not react in an accepting way, trusting the other with your feelings, however, will often lead to them opening up with you as well. If you always wait for another, for the other to open up first, it may never achieve closeness, or you may never achieve closeness. Even if another person does not accept the thoughts and emotions you reveal, the relationship will often be better off for your honesty. Learning to manage the uncomfortable feelings you have when someone does not agree with you without resorting to attacking or withdrawing is an important skill. You can work on your intimacy whether you have a partner who wishes to or not. It is never too late to begin again. So pretty much just saying like, be open, be honest, talk about your emotions, talk about your feelings, and your partner doesn't accept that or rejects it. It's okay that they don't feel the same way that you do. They might never actually feel the same way that you do. They might not understand where you're coming from, but it's up to your partner to be trying to like at least learn to understand or try to figure out where that line is at. So it's okay to open up and be and just understand that your partner might not 100% understand you, but they are they're listening to you and they will try to work with you on something. Now you get completely shut down. Your partner try attacking you or saying something about it then you might not be in a good relationship and might try to look at it and be like, you know what? We tried this 15 times. It's not changing. Maybe this is not the, the right fit for us. When emotional distance has become a habit, relationships break down. It's increasingly likely. Oh, wait, sorry. We had that wrong. When emotional distance has become a habit, comma, relationship breakdown is increasingly likely. The risk to the relationship of not opening up is far greater than the risk of being honest. Challenge your limiting beliefs about masculinity, such as men are always in control or boys don't cry. Seek out an, in, seek out an individual or a relationship counselor if you need help with developing intimacy. Okay. I think that was a solid article there. I will put this article in the comment section. You want to read this over for yourself. I think it's a solid a solid article about men and intimacy and that men don't really open up about it because we're not taught to open up but you have to learn to open up and learn to be you know open with your partner and it's okay it's okay and that partner doesn't you know accept you for who you are and accept the things you're into accept the things that you want to be open about and be close with them about they don't accept that maybe not a good fit for you it's it's okay to move on you don't have to be in a bad relationship trying to force something when the door doesn't want to open up or try to put a square into a circle like the little, little toy box put the square into the circle and that doesn't work you can't jam the square in there it's gonna you know just never gonna go through so you find yourself trying to gram, jam a square into a circle to a round hole you might find yourself trying like okay it's, it's, it's time to leave it's time to leave alright next article here this is from Style Craze Dot com and they said 21 things men want in a relationship desperately like we desperately need this um they said trust honesty and fidelity are just some of the many things men seek in a relationship 
This is a review by Karen Marshall, certified relationship and dating expert, created by Shani Shania Tate on June 13, 2023. So this is recent. Women are more vocal about what they need and desire, but men want in a relationship remain a mystery more often than not. Men and women think differently, behave differently, and even want different things in a relationship. While women try to express themselves a lot, men reveal less. Thus, it becomes difficult for women to express their men as they don't know what they're like or dislike. But don't worry, we got got your back. In this article, we listed 21 things that men want in a relationship and what you can do to make them happen. So, what are you waiting for? Let's jump into it. 21 things, top 21 things men want in a relationship. And number one, honesty. Men seek honesty in a relationship. Honesty is a top priority for men. When it comes to relationship, men want to trust their partner completely. They also expect trust to be reciprocated. A man cannot be, be sorry. A man cannot bear to keep in the dark over any matter by his partner. They prefer to know the truth regardless of how unpleasant it might be. That's that's anybody. That's not just men. That's everybody. Okay, two, men don't want to be controlled in a relationship. Yeah, pretty much. Let's see what they go. Men like to be, no man likes to be manipulated or controlled by his partner. Often, women often believe they can change a man, but it's important to give a man space to be with his friends, have time for his hobbies and interests, and develop interdependent, healthy relationships. Sometimes individuals think manipulation or forcing control is the only way to get a man to do certain things, particularly if one partner is codependent and looking for a partner to make them happy when they should focus on making themselves happy independently and with themselves. But this is often the reverse effect. A man can feel restricted as if his freedom is being taken away, his mother are emasculated or is treated like a child and told what to do. This behavior will also put, push a man away. This isn't healthy for a relationship. That's true. Like, men don't want to be controlled. I, once again, I talked about this earlier in, the, in another part of the video. We're like, no, we want them to be able to have our own things to do. We want to be independent. We want to have our own hobbies, our own things. We don't want to just have somebody underneath our wing at all times. Even if we're somebody who loves our partner and want our partner to be there, we also still want to have time, maybe sit down, read a book, sit down and play a video game, sit down and go somewhere, or sit down and go somewhere, as in like, you know, a bar or something, but like with your friends. Like, we do want to have time to ourselves. And I think everybody needs time to themselves. It's not super healthy to be always underneath each other's wing, you do need time to have your own things, have your own hobbies. The last episode with Sam, we were talking about like, what do men talk about? We talked about our hobbies and interests. Sam came in with a Game of Thrones shirt. We talked about Game of Thrones or House of Dragon. Like we sit there and talk about that and that's what guys talk about. We talk about our interests and hobbies versus really just like personal deep dark things. We, we don't really talk about that. We're more just having a good time. And we need that time to be able to have a good time and not have our partner be underneath us at all times. Or asking what are we going to do, where are we going? Especially if somebody who is like, hey, trust me, I'm not doing anything wrong. I invest in our relationship. I love our relationship. Do not like sit there and like, where are you at? What are you doing? What are you doing? How can you respond back to me? Don't like, I respond back when I respond back. Especially if you just send a text that says hi or hey, like I will get back to you when I'm free or I'm not as tied up. Three, men want confident and secure partners. Just, just talked about that. Men like women who are confident and considerate of their partner needs in the relationship. They do not want a partner who are insecure and cannot stand to see them with any other female, but it, it but it, their friends, family, colleagues, or mere acquaintances. If a man isn't a good, is a good communicator with a partner and openly shares his plans where he is going and where he needs up going or sorry where he ended up going this helped any partner feel considerate a woman may feel uncomfortable knowing her man is with another woman but as long as he demonstrates honesty and shares what he is doing before and after the event he will begin to build a much stronger bond for trust to grow which is the most viable foundation of any healthy relationship once again this is about a healthy relationship this is not just a man thing this is 
women as well. Yes. If we're open, honest, telling you like, hey, I'm going to play volleyball. I'll probably be there from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. The last tournament I did lasted like five hours. But if, if I'm there for that long, that's where I'm going to be at. I'll let you know when I get home. I'll let you know when I'm going somewhere. Like... Man, if a guy's telling you, if women, if a guy's telling you what he's going to do, what he's planning on doing, where he's going to be at, and you message him, he's able to respond back to you and say, hey, I'm still here at the place doing this. And maybe a friend of his is a female friend who that he known before you came to his life, before you met him in a relationship. Like, that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. As long as he's being upfront and honest with you. Where... A relationship gets crazy and messy and muddy when the person you're asking, hey, what are you going to do? Or, matter of fact, they're not being open and honest with you. So you ask, what are you going to do? And he's like, oh, no, we'll figure out how long we'll be there. Or he's not like checking in with you say, hey, I'm still here. Can I give you the heads up? Like, there are things a guy can do to, to let his partner know that he's still doing this. He's still, you know, he's trustworthy. Checking in, reaching out. But we want somebody secure to let us go do our thing and not you feel like that you're hawking over us or you're in the bushes in the corner like wait is that so and so who is that like an honest guy gonna be 100% honest with you he's not gonna hide anything he's gonna tell you what he's gonna do plan on where you're gonna be and a guy you ask like hey you know when you get the movies like watching you know across the spider verse and he gets offensive about it I told you I was in the movies I'm not sure why you asked me this that's a, that's a red flag when somebody gets offensive when you ask them what they're doing it's a red flag, but as far as just them being honest up front, not a red flag at all. Number four, men want to be accepted for who they are. We already talked about this. Yes, yeah, like set me for who I am. I don't want to change. This is the kind of person I am. This is who I am from the jump. I'm a nerd. Yeah, I love it. Take it or need or take it or leave it. Cause I'm not changing. I'm not gonna stop being a nerd. I'm not gonna stop watching superhero movies. I'm not gonna stop doing this. I'm not gonna jump into cars because I'm not a car guy. I, I love comic books. I love manga. I'm not going to put that away because you think it's childish or silly or goofy where the case may be. I'm going to do what I want to do because that's what brings me joy and happiness. So men are not going to change who they are. They're not going to change their standards. So that's plain and simple. Five, men seek commitment and fidelity. Same for women. Yes, we seek commitment when we trust it. We're our partner. Men want clear communication. Yes, we can't read minds. I'm sorry. It's not going to happen. Ladies... You have to be upfront with us. You gotta be upfront and blanket statement, not like, well, I said this, how come you didn't get that? Like, I can't, I can't read your mind, I'm not gonna think the same way you do, it's just not gonna happen. So, you, if there's something you want to happen, you have to let me know. If if you don't tell me, I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna try to hint at it, you gotta let me know. You'll say, hey, this is what I like, I take that consideration when doing something, but you have to at least speak it. I can't just, you know, Read your thought process on that. Let's see what they say about it. If there's one thing men do not want in a relationship is a lack of clear communication. What men really want in a relationship is for you to express your emotions and expectations clearly. If you hesitate to send a clear message, you can create confusion. But bingo. All right, number seven, men want respect. Yep, but both people do though. Number eight, men seek stability and growth. Yep, uh, men crave emotional intimacy. We just talked about this. Let's see what they say about it. Most men are conditioned to believe that they cannot be weak or show their vulnerable side. Such vulnerability includes expressing concern, showing pain, divulging fears, etc. But for some men do crave emotional support from their partners. They want to feel comfortable enough with their partner to share their secrets, their fears, and how they really feel if they are wired this way. If they have, if they were encouraged to express themselves as a child, they would do this more easily as an adult. Once a man trusts you, he will share himself without any pressure to do so. So ladies, a man expressing his emotions, expressing his feelings, do not shut him down. Say, you're not being manly. Don't do that. That's the easy way for us to like walk away. If we're going to be up in front, honest with you, especially if we see you as a lifelong partner, if we see somebody we invested in, we're going to tell you everything. We're going to share ourselves with you. So do not shut us down when we emotionally open up. There's one video I watched, or I think I reacted to a girl. She was like, I don't like men who express themselves. Well, then go talk to a dude who's going to just blow you off and not really care about you. If we truly care, we will express ourselves. Ten, men desire space in a relationship. We just talked about that. 11, men want a physical connect, want a sense of physical connection. 
For a man, physical intimacy and touch signifies uh, a significant and it relates. Sorry, let me start that over. For a man, physical intimacy and touch are a significant in a relationship. It is his way of feeling connected to you on a deeper level, but the physical connection does not mean he wants to have sex with you all the time. It can be something as simply as a hug, holding hands, or a deep kiss. True. I talked about this before. A full hug for me is a full embrace. Show me that you're somebody that's more than as a friend or a, a close, a long, long, a long, long friend or somebody I deeply trust and respect. A full embrace hug. Um, my girlfriend full embrace hug is gonna be longer than like a couple of seconds. It's gonna be a long hug, but a side hug immediately shows that you are just a friend, like just a friend. Especially if I give a girl a side hug, is a friend, nothing too personal. So yes, I definitely agree with that. Men look for security. Yep. Men expect to be understood. Yep. That's number. That was number thirteen. Number fourteen. Men want to have fun. Yes. Women too. But yes, men want to have fun. It's not just women who love a sense of sense of humor in their partner. Even men want it. Having a fun-loving partner who does not take things too seriously helps them relax and unwind. Is that is why they want a partner who can be spontaneous, laugh with them, and willing to show their playful side. Yeah, yeah, they want to have fun. They don't want they want to get stuck in a relationship and be like, well, I guess all the fun and joy is over. I guess we won't be able to go do things we want to go. We won't go go on hotel vacations. We won't be able to go to so and so. We can't do this. We just sit at home and watch TV on the couch and get a mundane routine. We don't want that. We do want to go out and do things. We do want to go out and have fun. We also want you there sometimes. We want you to have you, want you with us when we go bowling with our friends and we'll invite you like. We want to have fun. We also want our partner to be there with us to have fun with us. We just don't want to sit there, go to the same mundane things, come back home, be roommates, and go to sleep. We don't want that. We actually want a fun, loving partner who like, hey, let's go off the couch. Let's go do something. And maybe you're an introvert. Maybe you're somebody who don't want to get outside. But hey, let's do board game night. Let's do video game night. Let's do, you know, instead of just doing the same movie night over and over again, we want to change it up. We don't want the same boring routine. Number 15, men want to connect over common interests. Sam and I talked about that last episode. We want somebody who is somewhat interested in the things we are and that we are interested in some of the things you are. Like, if we don't have anything to really, like, talk about when, it, you know, the seriousness is over and just goof around with, or I see something that really, like, sets me off, I'm like, holy crap, there's Spider-Man. I start explaining about it, and I feel like you're shutting me down when I start talking about it. Like, we, we don't want that. We don't have somebody who jumps into our answers or at least be somewhat peek into the door who will be able to hear us out and exp like, oh, okay, you're getting excited about this. Like, what, what about it makes it so fun and exciting? Um, men love it when their partner takes an interest in their hobbies and passion. It could be anything such as their love for jogging, photography, playing the guitar, etc. It's their way of spending more time with you while, have, while being happy and doing their own thing. 16. Men seek maturity from their partner. Yep. Uh, 17. Men expect to be pampered. It is not just women who expect a bit of pampering from their partner. Men love to be pampered equally. While they may not expect you to gift them chocolates or flowers every day, occasionally romantic, romantic massages or surprise like an unexpected surprise date night is much appreciated. Yeah, like I do want to be treated nice by my girlfriend. I don't want to be treated like a like a a toy or a rugged rag or just something that you throw in the closet. I don't want to be treated like that. I want to be treated nice by my girlfriend. That's why they don't want the same thing. I would like to treat her the same way too. I want to treat her nice. So, yeah, 100%. I think men expect to be pampered. I don't think it should be expectation. But we, we would, it'd be nice to, it'd be definitely nice to be like treated in a sense where you're just not like, Oh, anybody else, this is any other person in a relationship, like, be thoughtful, thoughtful gestures, thoughtful things, you know, a romantic, a romantic massage, a nice massage is great, like, yes. 18. Men expect their partners to set up for them. Men expect their partners to step up for them, sorry. Men are turned into, men are tuned to fight their battles on their own. These battles can range from struggling with difficult family relationships or dealing with financial crisis introspective of problems they expect you to be on their side to offer support they expect you to step up for them be their strength and offer 
a listening ear. Okay. 19. Men want to be taken care of. Kind of talked about that. 20. Men want to feel like a priority. Yeah, we don't want to feel like some like your like I said, like your side thing. Like we don't want to be like, okay, so this is my relationship I just have. I'm gonna do my own thing and kind of just leave you over there. And vice versa. Women, like the same thing, men to women, like women don't men don't just leave your wife or girlfriend over here, like, oh, this is no, that's my girlfriend, that's what she is, and over here like we want to make sure that we both invest in our relationship. We don't want to feel like we're not investing in a relationship that we're just there. We want both sides want to be feel like they're important to the other one. Let's see. Men do not want to be taken for granted in a relationship. They want to be feel valued and appreciative and being a priority for, for the person they love. Being inconsiderate towards this need of your partner can harm your relationship. When you show empathy, tell him how much you appreciate him or you are sorry he had had a bad day to know he is not alone. If you are unable to prioritize his needs, immediately let him know you will prioritize him as soon as you can. Okay. 21. Men want a partnership. Men love it when their love of their life becomes a complete partner. They do not want to be, they do not want her to remain only as a girlfriend or wife. They want it, they love it when they have a true friend in their partner in front of who they can let their guard down and confide to. All right. Yeah. Want a partner and want somebody to be able to support both sides and not just sit there. There's some guys out there who like, no, I don't want that. I just want somebody who just sits in on the couch and fall 10 feet behind. No, I want an equal. Most guys you talk to today, they want an equal. They just don't want somebody who's just like, oh, you're yeah, over there and I'm doing my own thing. Like, no, they want an equal. They want somebody to help out, want somebody to lend a hand and vice versa. Like a woman, like, be willing to help out, be willing to lend a hand and, and and also, God be willing to lend a hand as well. I don't just sit there and be like, all right, girl, I just do everything myself. Okay, well, that's the most part. Y'all agree with some of this. Agree with my majority of this. Then they have a whole thing about types of intimacy in a relationship. And then they have frequently asked questions. All right, let's go down. Let's go down the list here. So the first thing I ask, what makes a man trust a woman? Just being open, just being honest, somebody who's there, like, make us trust a woman. It, somebody we see who can cut back, be goofy, have fun, but also not hide anything, who's open and honest with us, who let us know, like, hey, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm up to. Just the same thing for a guy in a girl, vice with a girl. A girl will want a guy who tell her everything, tell her where she's at, or tell, tell him where she's at. He tells her where he's at. <laughs> um, they're, like, just... Honesty, just be open and honest. What are men's emotional needs? What are a man's emotional needs? That that depends on the guy. Like, for me, my emotional needs is somebody who listens to me, who is there to uh, be competitive with me, who scratches my itch when it comes to just when I geek out and, and they're there to listen and get to like, I'm not trying to think I got physical, but like, give me a hug, but that's more physical. It's for the whole who listen, who listen to me, who, who hype me up, hype them up back. Like, just as a partner, a partner, a supporter, somebody who's, who got you, but also has the same, like some of the same interests when it comes to life goals and comes to doing stuff who won't sit there and shut me down. Somebody who allows me to be myself. Let me see what they said. Men may not express, may not be expressive, but they also have emotional needs. They look for confronting, comforting companionship, affection, emotional security, appreciation, compatibility, good level of understanding, independence of decision making, and encouragement from their partner. I guess I just say a little bit all that. Uh, three. What do men find most attractive in a woman? What do men find most attractive in women? When we talk about women, what do we all find? I guess at first off with physical. Physical? Like we have to be physically attractive first. That that where the first layer comes from. Like you see somebody like she has a nice smile, she has a nice face, you know. Um 
because that's the one thing we will see the most. We're looking at the face the most. So we we'll say the face. Then we might go to the body. So far, depending on the kind of guy, but that's different for each guy. But I think generally most guys talk about the face, the smile, and then after that level, you, what uh, keeps us there, the attraction after that, is personality. Are they fun? Are they intelligent? Are they, and if they're intelligent, like, can it, like, depend on way, like, intelligent as, not just like, okay, are you smart, but how you like to keep a conversation going. Are you a conversationalist? That's what I meant. Not intelligent, but conversationalist. Like, are you intellectually on the same wavelength when it comes to the two? Like, can I hold a conversation with you? Um, emotional intelligence is probably the way to go. That's probably what I was thinking of. Not just intelligence, because intelligent, everybody's a sense, or in a sense of smart in their own way. But emotional intelligence, when are you guys, there's a connection between you guys' emotional intelligence, how you guys react to certain things. That's where we kind of start to find, like, attractive from that second level and how you interact and bond with people and everybody else, how you are around around your space. It's probably what we look at next. Let me see, but it said most attractive. Let's see what they say. Men looking for a long-term connection and find independent, self-assured, confident, expressive women attractive who can hold their own but also have a also be sensitive to other. These qualities primarily become a source of their attraction. Okay. All right, I'll put this article in the comment section below so you want to go through and read it, go for it. But that's that's pretty much the first two topics of this episode. Now I'm going to jump into some TikToks and then am I the jerk from Reddit and call it a day. All right, guys, so let's go and get into some TikToks here. This is from See The Thing, See The Thing Is Pod. Uh, we're going to go through five videos. So here's the first one. Let's go and get it started. Do you judge the success of a relationship on whether or not it lasts? I don't think all interactions with people are designed to last. They serve the purpose that they serve for, the reason why they needed to serve that purpose. For and, a season. And, and a reason and a time, mm -hmm. you know. I really live by that. There's intense moments that I've had with people, but it lasted. But then I've had, like, the longest drawn-out interaction with people that I was like, why are you still a thing in my life? <laughs> Did that ever work in any capacity? Girl, yes. It's called a Rolodex. Not a Rolodex. Everybody that you have dealt with in the <sighs> past, I ain't gonna hold you. Okay. My homegirl, she's in a breakup right now. Okay. She's like, and I have nobody because I cut everybody off. Mm. Mandy's like, that's not true. All you gotta say is, hey, how you been? And they all come right back. Getting is not the flex. Preach it. Mm. Keeping. Keeping. Keeping is the flex. You Getting get is not the flex. How let me about what you were able to keep. I'll add me about you being kept. Oh. I'll replay that one more time though, because her question was, do you judge the success of a relationship on whether or not it lasts? Do you judge the success of a relationship on whether or not it lasts? I like what he said towards the end there about like, getting is not the flex, keeping is the flex. So she was talking about she with her friend with the breakup, and she's like, oh yeah, yeah, you just holler if you just want somebody to, you know, hook up with, holler to your, you know, guys, and one dude's was, where you used to hook up with one of the guys, if he's not in a relationship and he's single, he won't, he, he'll hit you back up and go from there. Now, that's a game to play, but okay, go for it, because you're just hitting up somebody because you're lonely, which is not good. You need to me, you need to go find who you are and find yourself at their breakup and take time away from dating and just get your, get who you are again. But do you think a relationship, you know, just a sense of relationship where not lasts? No, I don't think that, that's a good judgment of, of a successful relationship because there's some relationships that need to end. There's some relationships where, where you know, it's toxic for both people and it's not a healthy relationship. And maybe there is a kid involved. Maybe there is, you know, a couple of kids. Maybe it's because you've been in a relationship for 10 years, but you guys are not happy. You guys are trying to work on it. And you guys are not getting better. And, and just working on it is, is causing more trouble and causing more issues. It's okay to end. It's not a failure of a relationship because of the fact that, you know, you ended something that wasn't right for the two of you. It's perfectly fine. Take what you learn from a relationship. Take that to the lessons you learn and use that as success. A relationship... The success of a relationship is what you get out of it and what you're learning from it. Not, not the fact that, oh, it lasted longer. Hey, you can have a successful relationship and it only lasts four months. You learn about more about yourself. You learn about what you're into. You learn about what you like and what you will put up with, what you won't put up with. I call that a success. Learning is a, re it's a success, 
not the fact that the relationship lasted for 20 years and you guys are hating each other at the end of it. That's not as successful. That's that's tragic. Now, as far as the flex of keeping the relationship lasting longer, yes, I will say that. When you talk to somebody like we've been together for 43 years, we got a 50 years, you're like, what? How'd you make that happen? What did y'all do? We've been together for seven years. How'd you make that happen? What do y'all do? Teach me something. I want to learn so when I get in a situation to marry somebody that I'm looking at them like, okay, you know, it's been eight years. This is how we kept our relationship alive and kept ourselves keep going and loving each other, not letting our relationship die out. That right there, that's the tips that I want to know. Not the fact that, oh, we get together for, you know, 38 years, but we hate each other at the end of the day. I can't stand my wife when she walks in. I can't stand my husband when he walks in. That's not fun. All right, next video, and this is from the same group, the See The Thing Is podcast. How do you tell the difference between love and lies? You, uh, bro, if I knew that. <laughs> we still working on that. So many people are really good at making lies feel like love. Mm. It's crazy, mm. and you and you'll fall for it, and you think, okay, can we keep going? It's like, no, I'm done performing now. Wow, men and women, if we ask a question, it's because we already know the answer. So don't be out here lying. Here's propose another situation. Stop getting mad at me because I'm not playing your game. Because I already know what you're trying to do. Ask what you want, mm. and I will give you the answer. But don't do all this dancing around shit. These women ain't shit. That's what he that's, really. That's he really want to say. Really <laughs> mean, because you are a really nice guy. <laughs> my... We're gonna translate that for the bitches. <laughs> We're gonna. <laughs> These bitches ain't shit. But I'm gonna say. The women really don't create a safe space for me. Ah, ah, <laughs> it's okay. They just took what you said and went the opposite direction. How do you tell the difference between love and lies? They just went straight in the opposite direction on that. Um, tell the difference between love and lies. It's not putting a blinder on. It's not putting a blinder on. If you see a red flag, okay, acknowledge it. But like, is it a deal breaker? Or you see a deal breaker, you're like... Yeah, the person go out every weekend. They go out every, you know, Monday through Saturday night. And they come back home at 4 a.m. in the morning. Why didn't he go out? I don't want somebody who goes out every weekend. Like, that's something that you have to be okay with yourself. You get asked, what is, what is your preferences? What are your standards? If your standards are this, and what's a preference? You got to look at the two differences of that. But if a standard is like, I don't want somebody who goes out every single weekend night or every single night they're out to 4 a.m. in the morning i don't want that person going out i don't want them going out i'm not gonna stop them living their life but i'm gonna make the choice to remove myself from that now so those one know what you know what you want and know what you're willing to put up with two don't rush a relationship which is how you know the difference between love and lies is don't rush a relationship you're not gonna know if somebody's really lying to you but how long can somebody keep a lie going Somebody in the comment, well, somebody can keep a lie going for 15 years. Okay, but you've seen the flags of that lie. You've seen the, the deal breaks, but you stay with it. So you see somebody reveal themselves to you, and you're like, okay, I'm going to just keep moving forward because I feel like that's what we need to do. Versus like, ah, I don't like this. I'm going to take a moment to step away. This doesn't feel good anymore. Like, versus just pushing yourself through it and seeing what they're doing. How can you tell the difference? You're not going to tell out the bat. You got to give yourself time. Take time to let the relationship grow. Take time to date. Take time before you put it, even before you put a defined relationship on it, before you say, hey, let's be in a relationship. Maybe take more time in the talking stage and take more time in the the, the, the dating stages. Like when you're getting to talk, you get to know each other. Take more time in that. Maybe go on seven days. Maybe go on nine days. And when I mean like nine days, I mean nine weeks. Like a date a week. Versus, you know, we ever, we saw each other Tuesday, they saw each other again Thursday, now we're going to play Sunday. That's the same, that's still within the same week. You still really got to tell really get to get to know somebody. Take time, don't rush it. And then you'll find out real quick which one, is when they, the, the story stays the same, you know, 10 weeks later, 14 weeks later, you know that person's not lying about it, but they change it up every time you talk to them, you're like, all right, your story's not matching up. Like, for example, my favorite comedian is Jerry Free. He's been on the show a few times. I've reviewed, reacted to some of his episodes. He has told the same stories for the last seven years or eight years I've been listening to him. Nothing about him has changed when it comes to the stories. That's how you know he's telling the truth. Like, there are people who make up stories when they do dating podcasts to sound more, sound like they're like, I feel you, I'm down with it. But if you listen to him, the story doesn't change. And you've been listening to them for five years and they're saying the same thing. Yeah, they're, they're telling the truth. 
Gary Vaynerchuk is another one. He's a um, entrepreneur when it comes to social media, and he tells the same talking points over and over and over and over again. I listened to him for like the last seven, no, last ten years. I listened to him when I was in college. His story doesn't change. He's not lying on how he got started. So that's that is where you have to know when somebody's lying and and loving the difference between love and lies is are they consistent and are they changing every time? If they change it every time. They're lying. If they're consistent with it. Nine times nine times out of ten, they're not lying. Unless it's a really good liar. All right, next video here is from KT Pineapple and I guess Q Pineapple underscore. So let's see what she's talking about. And there's a guy who reacts to her video that I'm going to listen to and then go from there. So let's see what she has to say. Nerdy dudes are the most underrated guy to date. Like you're telling me you don't want to go out. You want to stay in and do the least. Play video games, watch movies, and eat snacks. Yes. Okay, so that was her video, Nerdy and then here's dude. this guy reacting to her video. This is from Marin. 1000% true, yes, but do not date him unless you're actually into the nerdy shit. Let me break this down for you, ladies. Today was a perfect Saturday for me. I went to the gym, I came home, I started drinking and driving, which means I played Mario Kart while drinking wine, and then I read half of The Last Ronin, the new Ninja Turtle play. comic book, added it to the collection, watched YouTube tutorials on how to do Dungeons & Dragons, because I want to lead a campaign in some of my homies want to get into it. Disney Plus just released Spider-Man Homecoming, so I'm about to re-watch that. My place right now is just littered with my book collection, my DVDs, my comic books, my Christmas tree still up because it has all my Nintendo knickknacks and ornaments on it. I got all my posters and everything still up. Everything's exactly how I want it. Dueling with lightsabers, watching Lord of the Rings, the extended cut, doing things like this doesn't sound fun to you, then you do not want a nerdy guy. You just want the qualities of a nerdy guy because nerdy guys, they are home bodies they have hobbies they have things that they like to do they stay loyal because they have their brains occupied on all this other stuff that keeps them busy but what happens is these girls date nerdy guys because they like those qualities but then as soon as you get in a relationship as soon as you move in together it's happened to me all this stuff goes into boxes it goes into storage it goes into closets and then y'all want us to stop with the nerdy stuff and the live laugh love and the target and the hobby lobby and the fake plant stuff come out and all this stuff goes away and it makes me want to live laugh leave this is just a disgusting Disclaimer, if you're a man that wants to date a nerdy woman or a woman that wants to date a nerdy man because they're homebodies, they have all these qualities that you admire, date them because you like the shit too, not just because you like the way that it makes them. Because nothing's worse than getting in a relationship with someone and then a few months, a year goes by and it's like, okay, but like, when does all this kid shit stop? Been through it, it sucks. I know a lot of other people have and I just wanted to put this out there. So repost, share, comment, like, and of course, follow me, I'm pretty funny. That's from Mario Marente. I, I do agree with him in a sense. Like, yes, if you're going to date another guy, you got to understand that we're not going to change. So you got to understand that we're not going to change the posters on the wall. We're not going to change who we actually are. Like he said, he did that. He went through it. He put up his stuff and he found himself not being himself. He found himself not being genuine, authentic. And for him, like he... He had to leave. That was his decision. Like, I guess one way you can do is have a man cave. If the shared space you guys are in, or is, you know, we might be able to, might be able to put up my Demon Slayer poster or my, you know, Black Panther poster or Star Wars poster. We might not be able to put that up in the living room, but maybe put it up in a section of the place where I do my reviews there. Do and just. Throwing out ideas here, like where our, my own room, my own man cave, where your case may be, where my stuff goes, but then the living room might, I might have one or two nerdy stuff up that people are like, is that Pikachu? Heck yes, yeah, a Pikachu. It's, it's a thing, it has to be a collaboration of it versus saying, like, I just want the quality, like he said, I just want the quality of a nerdy person who doesn't really go out, who doesn't really do this, who sits at home and plays video games, who sits at home and read manga, who sits at home and read comic books and draw, I like the quality is that because that person's not, it's a safe person. But when you're trying to move in, like, oh no, we gotta get rid of all this stuff. You're still, you're still being a kid. No, we're, we're still gonna be that person. We're not being a kid, we're just being an adult who grew up with the things we love and we build a lot of things and express our things that we love and express it to everybody. Live, laugh, love, 
the romance rom-com movies like people love that stuff people buy things and talk about movies and talk about references the office people love the office that that didn't change for you it's not gonna change for us so yes I kind of agree with him at that point. If you're going to date somebody who's into nerdy stuff, don't expect them to completely change. Collaborate. You know, go halfway, but your stuff shouldn't go into a box and go into the garage. Be able to have a room maybe like for you to put your own stuff up or have a section where this is your part of the apartment. If you live in an apartment. All right, next video here. Tips for girls to, do, to flirt better. That's what she says. This is from... Brianna talks too much. Girl, I got you. You are not going to believe this, but most men are actually really afraid of us. I know it sounds crazy, but it's less of like a physical fear like we have and more like a social fear. So if you do the approaching, there's a very good chance he's going to be instantly interested. I used to think you needed like an excuse or a reason that you were approaching a guy because I didn't want to be weird or bother them. But I've learned from listening from my male friends that honestly, that kind of just confuses them. They'll be like, no way she's flirting with me. This isn't real. So be direct with like a, hey, I like your blank. What's your name? You know how it makes our heart glow when we get a compliment? that isn't about our physical appearance for them it's the opposite if you tell a man that he looks good in a certain color he will buy that color for the rest of his life yeah yeah no that's i agree with that like she that's a good way to do it the approach so the minute uh, episode with sam was like just like i walk by this guy i don't know how to approach him like a high no how i can do it extra a good way to open up like hey i love that shirt on you i love the uh it worked well with your body or your, your your complexion you know that will open up a dude, but oh, she's flirting with me. She she, she liked the shirt. She liked the complexion, by the way, my complexion. Okay, now I can rather engage. I was like, I'm going to keep walking away. So I I do agree with her on that. That's a good tip where, you know, talk about our appearance. Oh, you look good, but don't come up and say, hey, poppy, or, <laughs> or hey, hey, cutie, or something like that. Don't, don't, don't go that far, but like, yeah, that jacket looks nice on you. Like, I think I like that jacket. You look good with that jacket. Oh, I like, I like the beard. I like the way you style your hair. Like, okay, guy, we'll, we'll get the flirting right there. Um, 1,000%. All right, next video. And this will be the last one here. This is from... This is from Under the Influence dot show. The comments of that poop is terrible for you. And I was like, what? the heck okay here we don't go. even be on a dating app to yeah, be honest don't. with you that's i was gonna say for you. if you are in the mindset of where you want to just casually date and you want to keep it on like social media focus on your instagram post better pictures develop something you'll pull way more than dating apps i promise 100. even if better, you're not famous like yeah better Jeff conversations James. at the very yeah. least you know what sucks if you are just looking for someone on instagram you don't really know where they live i mean you kind of do because it's like it, realistically who, who you're gonna end up following on instagram is not random people on your explore page because they have clout and they're a little bit out of reach right but people that your friends put on their story or yeah. their posts tagged like in friends pictures of friends they're tagged in shit, and you know that they're from this area or they're from whatever area that they're from instagram knows that, like people meet on instagram like they're not idiots mm -hmm. but they're never gonna like pivot into a dating app because that's no. not what they are what would you want to see out of a dating app that would lead to more i don't want to see, see anything out of a dating app i would like instagram to add like kind of like how they did the pronouns like add a part for your city dating us. industry is like trillions of dollars or high billions because people are so lonely Why? and i think a lot of people underestimate how lonely a lot of the population is that's what i was saying you guys were saying oh like focus on your instagram and get off dating apps a lot of people that's not necessarily a great option because i barely post it's hard to think about it that's true. imagine some accountant being like what photo should i take like at his desk like <laughs> i get it this is more like for young men mm. i guess yeah no they're wrong don't even be on a dating app. That makes no sense. The point of the dating app is to meet people on a dating app. It's to meet people and get them off the dating app. Everybody went to the dating app for either to hook up or to meet somebody. Those are two things that people on a dating app for. Hook up, meet somebody, and, and go from there. Why would you use Instagram, an app that is not made for that? Yes, I mean, you put pictures up there, so people are like, oh my gosh, like pictures, and then, but you don't know much about somebody. You're just going off of their bio, and off, their, off their appearances alone. These dudes, I get a lot of likes on my Instagram page. Good for you, but not every guy is posting on Instagram. So a girl is on there, you know, if a girl's on her Instagram, and then some dude flew out of her DM, talking about, hey, I think you're cute, can I take you out? 
But you had the dude had nothing on his bio, nothing on his on his um, Instagram. I only have one photo of him. She's not responding back to that. Like the dude has a better chance of talking to a girl on a dating app, Tinder, Hinge, Bumble, and getting to meet her and take her out versus going on Instagram. These dudes apparently slide in girls' DMs. Good for them. Have fun. But like the girls said, like you don't know what city they're actually in. You don't know what city they're actually from. They can say I can put on my. I can put on my Instagram, I'm from Los Angeles, and be right here in Kansas City. Like, what they're saying is bad advice. Well, this is for young men. No, you, you guys are social media entrepreneurs. That's why you guys have that. That's why you guys are doing that. Like, social media influencers, you guys can get away with that, but the average Joe cannot. Get up. Get on a dating app if you want to meet somebody. Don't go through Instagram. Like, well, you go through the friends' friends or friends' profile. I like their profile. Okay. Well, I know. Go no, not like their profile. Go to the friends of friends. So you see a girl post her friend in there. You think she's hot. You click on her profile and then add her and then try to you know, move your way in. Like our Instagram picture knocking on the window and then hopefully you get a like back and you get a like back means she's interested. That's a game you're playing when you can just take the confusion out of it. Go straight to Tinder, go straight to Bumble, straight to Hinge, and the girl puts her Instagram profile in there on her dating app once you're trying to get clout, so you can go follow her Instagram and try to talk to her that way. That's one way to do it, but she has to give the invitation to make that move, not just be a creepy dude and go slide in her DMs, hey, I'm trying to take you out. People hook up, yeah, people get, meet people on Instagram all the time, like this, that happens. I'm not blind to that, but... Think of the platform you're on. Think of the platform. Like Facebook did Facebook dating, but they have a whole section for Facebook dating. You can go on there and get a whole profile created and you're not mingling with your friends. Think of the platform you're on. What's the platform intended for? Instagram not intended for dating. Instagram intended to be a picture book, a photo book, where you share your life, share your de design, what you're doing, and maybe share your business. It's not meant for dating. You can try to make it a dating app, but your chances are going to be a lot harder than going to Tinder, Bumble, or Hinge. Just saying. Alright, so we're going to have two Am I the Jerks on this episode. Let's kind of get them started. So the first one is, am I the A-T-A-H for being upset with my boyfriend congratulating his bar for dating a woman 14 years younger than him? So here we go. My boyfriend, John, 39 male, and I, 32 female, were out for drinks and he was telling me about how he got a haircut with a new barber, also 39, early in the day. John was telling me that the barber was the same age as him and that he said he was dating someone who was 24 female. John said that when he heard th that, he responded with, wow, congratulations, man, good for you. I asked why he would, why we could congratulate someone simply because their girlfriend was younger, not because of her personality or motivation or anything. Just because of eight of the age difference, I just wanted to better understand his thinking behind it. He tried to backtrack and tell me that the barber and his girlfriend have been together for two years, lived together, and that she's more mature beyond her years. John was just happy for him because he could relate to him, consider they discussed how they both only really matured in their late thirties and and are now with people younger than them. I thirty two, I got together with John when I was 29, successful, established, and with my own place. That's not where I was at when I was 22, 24, and I guess I just got a bit triggered remembering what it was like being in my early 20s and being approached by men in their 30s and 40s who were far too old for me. I also had experience dating men in those days who were 10 years older than me and we never really had nothing in common. Looking back, those men also wanted a certain power dynamic that I wouldn't want today as a mature independent woman. I know that age is just a number and people can have success with partners of different age groups, so there's not a judgment there as long as they're happy and compatible. My issues with giant inter interpretation. There is a guy guidance about him which I think can be toxic in that we had other arguments over. I also remember when we matched on a dating app, his profile said he was 35 when he was really really in reality 37 probably knowing younger women have an age cut off i have also heard him say things like in the context of talking about a past hookup 20 is a great age for a woman 
I went on a bit of a rant telling him that women go through life being told their youth is viable and that there's consistent sub subliminal messaging that tells us society deems us worthless as we get older without being too sensitive for an argument about this. Yes. You wasn't mad at his comment. You was mad at your boyfriend. That's two different things. So don't put it off as, was I, you know, the jerk for, congrats for my boyfriend congratulating his bar for dating a 24 year old. You're not mad at your boyfriend by, you're not mad at your boyfriend by his comment. Cause if my barber told me, oh yeah, I'm dating, I have a new girlfriend and she tells the age, I'll be like, cool. Like as long as like it's, you know, like 24, 25, 26, 27, and the dude 39, like, dude, congratulations, man. Congratulations to your relationship. Congrats, you're in a relationship, and you sound happy about it. I would probably say the same thing, like, yeah, man, you're happy about it. Good for you. And then he started explaining, like, all the stuff, like, if John would have opened up and said, like, oh, when he met this girl who is, you know, mature, who got her own thing going on, because you could be 24 and be established, and they especially have their own business, and they, They've been working at businesses they're they're 18, 19, or in their 20s that has been established for you no know, all these years. There are young entrepreneurs out there who are doing well for themselves. That's perfectly fine. So for her to attack her boyfriend about the fact that that her bar that his barber is dating a 24 year old and maybe she likes older men. I don't know that relationship dynamic. We don't know that relationship dynamic. We shouldn't try to judge the two based off the relationship dynamic and what they're into like she's 24 she's clearly of age she definitely have her own thing going on she's okay dating a 39 year old he's 39 he's okay dating a 24 year old go for it now to trickle back to what she was in like what she was upset about one she's upset about the fact that like she know at that age her 22 24 year old she wasn't ready to be in a relationship heck I wasn't like established enough at that age too. I get that. That that's me and that's her. She wasn't established at that age. She wasn't ready to really seriously date and move on with a relationship with somebody who's older than her. It's completely fine. And then the guy she talked to wanted this power dynamic. He wanted to be somebody like, oh, I'm the older guy, I'm a more mature guy, and you're the young 20-year-old who don't know what you're talking about. Once again, that's the kind of man she was dating. This barber could be completely different. He could not. He might not have that same mindset. He just might match with a girl in her twenties and 24, 22, 24 and because he would have been thirty. Since he's day for two years, so he would have been thirty seven, and she was twenty two. He's cutting it close there, but anyway. Or maybe they might met somewhere. I don't know. They met dating out, met, met a at a bar or something like that. I don't know what their dynamic is or how they met, but I can't judge the barber's relationship because. I don't know that dynamic. I don't know what they're into. But as far as her reaction to that comment, it was unnecessary. She was more mad at her boyfriend who, one, she's mad that he lied about his age on a dating app. Okay, so that means you wasn't going to date him when he was 35. Uh, when he said he was 37, like, you wasn't going to date 37 year old. You was okay with dating a 35 year old. But you let that red flag, to me, that would have been a red flag. You let that red flag sit there and you didn't do a deal breaking in a relationship when, if that was a big issue, so you should have. Broke it off. And you know, like the fact that he said, like, you know, a younger woman is a better age, a better, you know, what was that comment? 20 is a great age for a woman. Okay, that upset you too, because you're not 20. You was 30 when you met him. So you're upset at the comments he is saying. You're mad at your boyfriend. Go after your boyfriend and say, hey, I'm appreciative when you, you know, it makes me feel a certain kind of way when you bring up the fact that younger women are more attractive, younger women are more, you feel like younger women are more attractive, younger women are more of this. And my thing, watch your boyfriend action, see what he does, see what he does. Because what you're doing, you're nagging him by little things that he thinks like, why she's upset about this comment. It's not the comment, it's more about his whole actions. And either he, if he genuinely believes that, you have to make the choice of stay in the relationship or move on. But it sound like he's not going to change his mindset about younger women. And that's just something that is just a reality of life. We all get older. It is what it is. But 
you can also be a fine 30 year old, a fine 40 year old, and age wouldn't be a thing. Like, so don't get jealous of younger women. Be the best 30 year old you can be for your for yourself and let that radiate and let your boyfriend be like, dang, my girlfriend's fine as hell. So I'm just scrolling through some of the comments here and everybody who is reading this, they are latching on to what the things the husband says. They all do the things that I've done where I'm latching on to the to what the husband's saying as far as like the things he said later that makes him sound more like a jerk versus what the wife is. Like I think the wife was being a jerk for the comment she said, like by going her her going off on the boyfriend liking, you know, a um the Barbara's boyfriend liking a 24 year old. I think she's reacted with really too much about that, but as far as her with her relationship with her boyfriend is where the issue comes into. So they all kind of say like, yo, your boyfriend ish comments are off, but I don't think it's regarding the the barber. They're all attacking the boyfriend now. But one person says, I don't like the comment or how it was implied, but I think the issue is with your boyfriend and his views on women's ages. Bing, go. This girl says, my husband is 14.5 years older than me. I started dating him at 24. Oh, would you look at that? I was in my master's and had a game plan on how, and game plan and what, and what was on a successful track. I'm 29, am the younger manager at my current organization. I make over six figures, go get it. And my husband helped me get there. He gave me great advice in climbing a ladder in a male dominated field. My husband has, and still gets sexiest comments like, sexist comments like this. To me, it shows the value of a person saying, it's not the person in the relationship. It is not the person in the relationship. And the original post goes, I completely agree with you. Age is just a number. I don't know enough about the couple to say if they have a good relationship or not. And it's none of my business. I spoke about what it was like for me when I was in my 20s as context to the complex feelings I felt and why it was. I think it's appropriate. My issue is solely with how my boyfriend approached it. And then the person goes back and says, I agree with his approach. is definitely concerning. I will listen to you. your gut on it. The one person who made him made a creepy comment similar to your boyfriend was cheating on his wife. Whoa. We found out later, years later, he always gave an uncomfortable vibe and I, w I never wanted to hang out when he was there. So I would, would rather, rally, Hallie, when his wife divorced him, oh, I was really happy when his wife divorced him and now we hang out with her and her new boyfriend all, boyfriend all the time. Yeah, like, you're not upset at the comment. Don't try to make it about the barber. Make it about what your boyfriend said. Not about congratulating. It's the comment that your boyfriend is saying that's concerning. So, yeah, one thousand percent. With your boyfriend, you have the issue with your boyfriend, not the barber and his girlfriend. All right, last one here. Would I be the a hole if I started dating before the divorce is finalized? I'm thirty five male, and my soon to be ex wife. Shay is 29 female. We have two children under four. We both agreed to get divorced about a year ago. We are still waiting for the for, waiting for the mandatory waiting period to end for the divorce to be finalized in 60 days. All the paperwork has been filed and we are amicable. She is letting me be the primary re residential parent and keep the and keep the house. I have been faithful for our entire relationship that has lasted about 10 years. She has not been and will probably marry her boyfriend, Rob, 65 male, by the end of the year. Every source I see online says that people should wait until after the divorce to start a new relationship. Most even say wait a year. I've been very lonely lately and am the one taking care of the kids most of the time. This is the only romantic relationship that I have ever been in my whole life because I have difficult time putting myself out there and have a strong fear of rejection. I'm not looking to jump back into a new marriage right away. I still, I'm still too hurt, but desire to be close with somebody again. Would I be the jerk if I try to start dating someone new or should I just suck it up and wait? No, you wouldn't be the jerk. Just you, you already got the waiting for the waiting period, the mandatory waiting period to end. You already finalized the divorce. You already, you know, it's been a year. Go date your ex-wife. This character has a boyfriend herself. Go date. Go have fun. Get out there. Like you said, you don't want a you know 
marriage. So just be upfront with that. Like, hey, I'm not looking for marriage. Put that in your bio. I just got out of a divorce, or just going through divorce, got out of a marriage. I'm not looking for anything serious. I'm just looking for a companion at this point in time, someone to hang out with, have a good time with. That's what I'm looking for. Like, not looking for a relationship. I just want to get back out there and just go on a few dates. Go for it. Put yourself out there. Start learning how to talk to women. Start learning how to talk to people. Just get yourself out there. You wouldn't be the jerk. So this one, no, this is clear cut, not a jerk. Just go do it. Get out there. Take it one step at a time. Just put feelers out there. Don't I guess go on Tinder. Tinder be the first one. Go to Tinder. You won't have the you won't have the barrier to entry is not that much. And just be upfront with what you want. Like, hey, I'm looking for a situation ship. I'm looking to talk to somebody. I just want a companionship at this point in time. I just going through a divorce. Like we're waiting for everything to be finalized. I'm not, you know, it's been a year. I'm just looking to have fun. I'm not looking for anything too serious. You'll find somebody who's looking for the same thing and you'll be good to go. So yep, go for it. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. We are on Spotify. So if you want to listen to us on Spotify, let's see while you're jogging. Go to Spotify, Nerdy Dating with Ali Zaka on Spotify. Or Ali Zaka Nerdy Dating on Spotify. One of those two. It's Nerdy Dating, Ali Zaka. And <laughs> thank you guys for listening to this episode so much. I appreciate y'all. Please like, share, comment, share to your friends, share to your family. Let everybody know about Nerdy Dating. Let everybody know, get into this. Thank you guys so much. See you on the next episode of Nerdy Dating. Oh, one more thing. One last thing. If you have a question, please put it in the comment section below and I'll answer the next episode of Nerdy Dating. Also, if you want to email it, you can send it to alizakanerdydating at gmail.com. That's alizakanerdydating at gmail.com and I'll read it on the next episode of Nerdy Dating. Thank you guys so much and keep being awesome. Thank you for watching this episode of Nerdy Dating. I really appreciate it. If there's another episode you want to watch, you can look at it right there. If you want to subscribe to the page and watch more content, it's down here. Also, you have a question about dating, you want to put it in the comment section, go ahead and do it. Or you can send me a dating question to my email of alizakanerdydating at gmail.com. That's alizakanerdydating at gmail.com. And I will answer your question on the next episode of Nerdy Dating. Thank you so much for watching the show. I appreciate you. And keep being awesome.